I've been to a few conferences this past month, and I've been talking about fine-grained reactivity, virtual DOM, and signals. Basically, how I think SolidJS has the best mental model for building things on the web. Many times, the conversation went through comparing React and Solid. And turns out, some of you don't like using the control flow components. So today we'll focus on the one that I believe is the first one that most people end up using. Yoo-hoo. We'll see how four is a huge step up from the classic array.map. And we'll also give four siblings index a little bit of attention and seeing how it works. Anyway, let's talk about list. Hi, I'm Achula. I'm a Google developer expert and I like talking about how things work on the web, but on a more practical way. So not so recently, I picked up Solid as my go-to framework for building web apps. And a little bit more recently than that, I joined the ecosystem team for SolidJS. And so now my plan is to help shed some light into how amazing the developer experience is in this framework. It get tons of props for its performance, but honestly, I think everything is kind of taken for granted when we don't understand all the optimizations that the framework carries out under the hood, so we developers can just use them out of the box. And that brings us directly to the control flow components, because that's some that's there's a lot of heavy lifting that they do there. So if you come from React, you're used to iterating through lists using the classic array.map. And that's it. Um, there's one important rule, which is you need to pass a key to every element, but frankly, I'll bet most people don't even know why they're doing that, because if there's no option, you don't kind of need to understand what's going on because you need to do that anyway, right? So, okay, let's go into Solid because Solid has two ways of building lists. You can use actually three because you can use the classical array.map and things will work. No pandas will die. Things are going to work the same way they've been working for you before, except you're going to have this crippling guilt that you could have been doing things in a better way. You see, because the control flow components will optimize your code to output maximum performance. The four is going to cache the value of each item. So when the list changes, only the relevant items get touched. And the index will cache your items based on the index, you guessed it, of the item. So you can touch things even more surgically when contents update. But this can have serious caveats. So stay with me and let's see how things work in practice. So here we have the same list of values that are going to create two different signals. One is going to be used inside a four and the other one is going to use array.map. Looking at the code, we can see how we're going to console log every time something gets rendered into the DOM. So on first load, we can see they behave absolutely the same. There's no significant difference. But once we clean the console and append an item to our map, everything renders again. That's about five times more work than actually needed. And for this constrained example, it doesn't make much difference. But imagine if there's more work being done by the list item component. Now, remember I said four caches by value, right? Let's clean the console again and add an item to our four. Only the new item gets rendered. So I believe this clears the air on why would you use a control flow component, right? Cheap optimizations. There's a lot of benefits with zero downsides. So if your list is entirely static though, yeah, knock yourself out with some vanilla JavaScript, but just wait a second. We are not done yet. Um, not all interactive lists are built the same. Let's have a look at the index component. So things get more interesting now. Let's look at the code first. We have this shuffle that's going to shuffle up some elements in our array, courtesy of our friend ChatGPT, same as the getRandomCaller. 
which is going to create random colors, um, hexadecimal colors for us. And we have our list now with X-Men. The four still looks roughly the same, uh, despite now we're using this get random color to set the, set a new color for each item as they get rendered. Um, and we still have this callback, which receives the item content as a reference, as a value. Let me stress this one out because it's important. The value is received as a reference. We are assessing it as we would a variable. So let's just scroll down to the index and see the, and check the difference. So the index has pretty much the same syntax. It's going to get the list of things and it's going to have the callback that's going to pass things around. We are still setting up a specific color, but look at this. The item now, it's not a reference anymore. This means that this signal will update without a re-render and it will be granular. And now you get why we have the random color to make the difference a little bit more apparent. So we are not going to need this because as we see, it, none of them triggers re-renders. So here we are, we have the same X-Men listed in both of them. As I refresh, I get new random colors to each one of them. And on four, the entire elements are going to be catched. So if we shuffle the list, elements get moved around in the DOM and contents do not change. References are not tracked. The list item, the LI element, HTML element, packs its bags and move within the UL. But the colors don't change, so there's nothing being computed again. We just move them around, they're just switching order. Remember, removing and appending elements to the DOM may not be the most efficient thing. So maybe that's not what we want. That's why solid also has the index. So within the index, the value is tracked. It's a signal we're using a getter to get to retrieve the value. So if any change is fired to the element, it's going to be updated right then and there. The list itself, or even the element, the li HTML element within the iteration are all unaware that the change has happened. And that's why when we shuffle, the text changes, but the colors don't. The, the order of the colors is still the same because the HTML elements are not moving around as opposed as of the four. And that's a very powerful flexibility, right? But maybe we should go a level a little bit deeper because this can backfire horribly on us. Now we have Again, the same list with all the X-Men, but in this case, we got some uncontrolled inputs right next to each one of our X-Men. Because there's no signal involved, the input is not tracked by solid. Let's have a look here. We have right next to it an input type that at this point is not doing anything because it's not relevant for, the, for this example. So right next to each one of them, we have one. So let's say it could be sending some data to a database or something like that. Let's say I have this list and I want to have the real names of each one of our X-Men next to their code names. So we have Scott, Logan, Aurora, and Kitty. So great. Everything looks nice. They're both the same thing, uh, so on. And I want to switch elements in my list for some weird reason. The order is wrong. Let's reshuffle within the four. If we change, remember the whole element gets moved around. So though the input itself is not controlled, we are moving the whole element around. So the value that's inside the element is tracked uh, is a reference. So we just change them places inside the UL. So everything works as you would expect. I'm moving the items around and the, the pairs keep up. But within the index, nothing is going to really move. I switch the contents. So look what happens if I shuffle. Now the code names switched order because that's what I'm updating. I'm updating the, the order of 
the code names in my list, but the real names stayed where they were because the inputs are not being tracked. So that's why I recommend if you're not sure on which one to go with, go with the four, because this can create the most difficult thing to solve. This can be a, like, a pain if you're unaware of this behavior or someone in your team is unaware of this behavior and this happens. So the four is a little bit more predictable. The index I would say to just skip when you really know that's what you need. So to sum it up, array.map, it's fine to use when your list is static and is gonna remain static throughout the whole life cycle of your program. While index, it's fine to use for those very specific cases when you may touch some contents within your list, but you're not gonna move things in your list around. And four should be your default alternative. If you're not sure how your app's gonna scale, if you're not sure how things, how other behaviors are gonna interfere with your list, go with four, because it's the one that's gonna give you the most optimizations with the less risks. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if it's useful to you, give me that good old thumbs up because this gives me some positive reinforcement in doing more of these. And oh, by the way, talking about positive reinforcement, if you give that big subscribe button, we'll be sure to see each other again. And that will make me happy as well. So with that, I'm done. See you on the next one. Bye.